pieces that I recovered from the ballistic gel from the sub X test that I did last week. Um, for any of you that saw that, for any of you that missed that one, I will add a link to the bottom of the page. But we lost about 30 grains. This is what I recovered from the ballistic gel. Hey YouTube, Guns of 38 here. Down here at the range today trying out these uh, 150 grain Hornady SSTs in 300 blackout. We're shooting it out of a 16 inch barrel. Uh, we're getting ready for a ballistic gel test. Uh, we're getting about 1900 feet per second uh, muzzle velocity. Out at 130 yards that's going to give us about 1700 uh, feet per second. That's where we're going to be taking our ballistic gel test. I'm going to try and use, I would like to use this for my deer rifle uh, this year, but we want to see what they're going to do in the ballistic gel test first. So uh, y'all stay tuned. Gonzo 38 out. Peace. Let's review the ballistic gel from the 300 Blackout 150 grain Hornady SST. Um, traveling at 1900 feet per second, muzzle velocity. Um, we go around to the entrance of the gel. We can see we have a very small entrance right there. And it, you can see it from this angle. You can see a spiral. Um, that barrel on that rifle is uh, one and seven twist, and this first spiral is right at about seven and a half inches in length, um, which is indicative of the of the barrel itself. Uh, that's one reason I believe this bullet. Expanded. We did not capture the bullet. I uh, tried a couple different ways, which I'll get into in a minute. <clears throat> but if you notice, we have a, a collapse right here in the center where there is really no wound channel, just a little tiny thin line. And I believe what happened there was uh, we had a, a gas explosion in the middle of the gel. You can almost see a little burnt spot right there. Um, and I caught both of these on film. I'll put... I'll put some pictures at the at the end of the video uh, for you to examine but um that actually happens when the projectile enters the gel creating a wound channel temporary wound channel it opens up it draws air in the entrance seals off before the bullet gets a chance to leave the end of the of the ballistic gel as the gel collapses on itself 
it creates high pressures and the gas is actually um, combust. So that I believe that's what created that, allowed that bullet to travel through this section without actually impacting. As it started to collapse on itself again, you can see that it created another wound channel here, another permanent wound channel. You can see that right here after that it dropped the tip. Okay, it was carrying that tip all the way through there. And this other little red dot right down there at the bottom, that's actually the base of that plastic tip, that hard plastic tip, that um, doesn't normally come out unless the bullet expands. Uh, otherwise it would just stay inside the, inside the projectile. So I really do believe that we got expansion on this. I've got something else to show you at the, at the end of this uh, ballistic gel test. So it traveled all the way through. I believe it traveled in a straight line. Um, I don't see any more rotation in this section at all. So the bullet stopped rotating, traveled through. We have a pretty clean exit. Um, I don't believe the bullet tumbled out of that. I believe it was expanded um, as it exited the ballistic gel. Now, behind the ballistic gel, even though we did not trap the bullet inside the ballistic gel, we got a lot of penetration, though. Uh, there was a coffee can. It's a, um, it was full of rags, had water in it, and uh, you can see the entrance of the bullet right there, and that was the exit. I believe that the bullet got trapped in the rags and actually forced the rags out of the back. You can kind of see how that, how that can's all bent up. But uh, and I'm going to swap hands here real quick, so I hope there isn't any noise. We have our coffee can and our entrance right there. And you can see that the base of that bullet fits right into that. But when you line it up, you can see that the tip... Oh, we got some shadows there. I'm going to change hands again. There we go. You can see how much longer the tip is when I line that base up. And uh, take my ruler. That measures, that expanded part measures right at about a half an inch, give or take. So I, I, I believe this bullet expanded. I believe this would be a viable uh, deer hunting cartridge out to about uh, maybe 150 yards. Uh, the bullet impacted, like I said, it's traveling muzzle velocity at 1900 feet per second, 1930 to be exact. And um, I believe it impacted the gel at 40 yards at about 1860 feet per second. And out at, uh, according to my calculations, out at 140 yards, it's dropped down to about 1,700 feet per second. I don't know if it'll expand it at those at those ranges, but uh, it looks like there's enough kinetic energy to do a lot of damage out at those types of yards, yardage, and uh, I believe we have a, a viable deer hunting round in our 300 blackout. Guns of 38, out. Hey YouTube, this is Gonzo 38. If you like what you see on this channel and want them to continue, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much. Peace, out.